All right, so we are in flash print and this is what it looks like. And you're gonna need to pick your printer, which is the Flash Forward Adventure 3. If you weren't prompted from the beginning to pick it out, you'd go here to the print and then machine type over here. And then you'd pick out all the different ones that they have here. And this is the one on the very top is the Adventure 3. And so what you're looking at here is a box of the build volume that you have on this printer. So it's 150 millimeters this way and then 150 millimeters that way, and then 150 millimeters tall. So here on top, you have three main buttons to load a file and then supports. And this is where you would print or do the final slicing, which will make you the code for the printer. So here on the side here, we just have navigation and uh, we'll go through all these real quick. So let's go ahead and load something. So anything you download from the internet is going to be STL files. So let's go ahead and just pick a Benchy here. So this is kind of like the benchmark of testing printers, little benchy boat here. So we're gonna go ahead and print this on the Adventure 3 and see how it comes out. So here on the side, we have the icon view. And if we click that, we can change the views. You know, or you can go ahead and drag it around and view it. And I didn't mention guys that I am using a Mac OS. So if you're gonna use Windows, it might be a bit different, but it should be very similar. So the next one we have here is move. And this just moves the, the model where you want it. And if you click on that, you can precisionly move it on the, on the build plate there to exactly where you want it. Or you can just click center and it'll center it. And if it's for some reason up in the air, you can click on platform and it'll bring it down. So the next part is rotate. And here you can rotate the model. You can either click these rings and rotate it how you want it. You know, you can go any direction or you can specifically insert them into here. So you can, you know, have the angle exactly if you need that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset that. That way we're back to normal. So the next icon here is scale. And scale, you can just make your model bigger or smaller, or you can make a specific axis bigger or smaller. So if you if you unclick this uniform scaling, you can, you know, make this bigger in one direction. And as you can see, guys, the bench is growing in a very funny way. But you know, that's one way to maybe put a little unique twist to a model if you wanted to. So we're just gonna reset that and make that normal again. Click on uniform scaling. So here we have the maximum button. If you click that, it'll automatically make the model as big as it can for the build volume, which is kind of cool. But we don't wanna print it that big. But I think I do wanna print the Benchy a little bigger. So we're just gonna go here and type in 150. And we have an 150% Benchy all the way around, as you can see, so and we'll print our benchy this size. So the next part is cut, and cutting is basically very useful if you have something large that doesn't fit on the platform, or if you have specific models that you wanna print laying down. So you can cut this benchy, let's say, exactly in half. Well, let's just say like that. And if I click cut, you can see it cuts it in two pieces. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be that I split it down the middle, but in any case, you get the point. You can split things down the middle and then you can lay these pieces down, let's say like this, and then you can print them one by one or even bolt together and then glue them together. You know, there's certain models that you might wanna print this way because of the overhangs and whatnot else. So just keep in mind that you do have this cut option, which is really cool. And here you can choose, you know, how to cut it. And this is probably what I should have done because I did it just draw with mouse. So you can get pretty precise on exactly where you want to cut it. So I just click Command Z which, or Control Z, whatever it is, to go backwards. And we are back at our benchy here. So now let's go to the top and talk about the supports real quick. So here you can create supports for overhangs. All the areas that, you know, where the printer has to print in the air. And so whenever you have to print on the air, you know, you can have a little bit of a, like sag and stuff like that. So and what you need for that is supports. So you have a few options. You can choose tree-like or a linear. I usually like these linear ones better. So what you're gonna do is just click out of support and the, uh, you know, it kind of calculates everywhere that support is needed. And you can see there, and technically these supports should just pop right off from the model, not too hard. So if you want to use tree-like supports, you can click on tree-like here. And that's what these look like. So it's just a different kind of support. So you can experiment with what you like. So, but we're not gonna do support for this model. We're just gonna print it the way it is because that is a test. All right, and so that's pretty much the whole thing, guys. You can, you can see that it's not very hard to use this flash print and it's pretty quick. 
So once you're happy with your model and you're ready to print it, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this print button here. And when you click on this, you're going to see this little window here. So here it shows you the machine type, which is your machine. On the top here, you have preview, print one slice. So you're just going to use preview. So if you had your machine already connected, you could, you know, check this and it'll, you know, print right away. But most of the time you'll just use the preview because you want to make sure everything's fine before you print it. So here we have the material, PLA or ABS. So here, if you have supports, so you're going to enable them here or disable them here. So don't forget to enable that if you do want supports. A raft is basically something that goes underneath your model. It's like another print. It prints out. It prints that first and then it prints your model on the bed. Normally I don't use it, but if it's your first time and you're still unfamiliar with everything, you might want to enable this. And basically it'll just print an extra little print underneath your model to make sure that your model sticks good to the bed. But we're gonna go ahead and disable it. So here is the quality of your print. A lower quality means faster printing. Higher quality means slower printing, obviously. Now I found that the high is the best efficiency for quality versus time. You know, but if you if you have bigger objects and you want them faster, you can go standard or even low. But you can experiment with all these. And so here you have brim. And what brim does is it just puts an extra layer of the first layer around your model. So if you're going to have something really thin and you need more support on the very first layer, you want to use brim. But we're not going to use that either on the sprint. And if you want to see more options, you click on more options here. And here you can kind of see the layer height, which is the resolution here. So if I click on standard, you can see the layer height changes here. I would definitely not suggest printing in low because this is not going to turn out very well. Standard would probably be your best bet if you wanted it pretty quick but high is the best quality for the time and hyper just takes way too long but it's up to you but obviously you can experiment with all this so shells is how many lines you have on a on the outside wall and three is definitely a good number and this is how many layers you have on the bottom and top so on the bottom there's four and on the top there's five this is how it's preset with the printer so we'll just leave everything like that so the infill is 15 percent which is a good number but i kind of like that at 20 so i'm going to change that to 20 and we're going to leave the rest like that. This is the print speed. It's how fast it'll print. The lower the number, the better the print. But obviously much slower. But 40 is definitely a good medium. And then the temperature. So this is about basic for PLA here. For the bed and then the uh, extruder. And then the cooling fan, we got automatic here. So, so I'm going to change this to 205. Print a little cooler. And if you, if you change any of the settings, you can click save configure here. And it'll save it. That way when you come back, it'll all be the same. So yeah, once you're happy with all this, you just click OK and that will slice the model and save it to your computer. So well, I'm just gonna go ahead and save it to the desktop so I can find it. And here you can see guys, this is the code that it spits out for the printer, the GX. So we're gonna save this 3D Benchy right here. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna slice it and save it to our computer. So when it slices it, it shows us up here in the corner how long it's gonna take, it's six hours and 27 minutes, and it's gonna use up 12.8 meters of filament. And if you want to know the weight of that, you just click this button here and it tells you that's 38 grams. So we know the included roll is 0.3 kilo, uh, kilograms, which is 300 grams, so that's more than enough, obviously. So we have plenty of filament and we can go ahead and print this. But on the side here, you can see, we have this little scroll here and you can see all the layers. So my computer is a little laggy, but you can kind of tell there if you're kind of curious of how it'll print throughout the print. So, so basically we're done here. Now, if you have your printer connected to your computer, you can go ahead and click this print button here and it'll print. So, but we're gonna go ahead and use the file that we saved to the computer. So we're gonna do it the simple way is we're gonna put it on a USB stick and then we're gonna take it to the printer. 